What's up, guys? So for the past couple weeks, I've been talking about how to practice coin magic with different advice and tips on how to help you get started. So we went over a practice drill and I taught a one coin routine that served both as a performance piece and a practice exercise. So I wanted to continue on that topic this week, but with two coins. So follow along with me as I guide you through a new drill you can use with two coins with different switching techniques and some new grips for you. I'll even teach you a spellbound routine I came up with just for this video. So go grab two coins and let's go. Greetings and welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. If this is your first time watching, be sure to subscribe and check out some of the older videos. I give recommendations on beginner resources, different books and videos other than Bobo's. I teach some of my own stuff and I give advice and tips on vanishes and other techniques. So be sure to check those out. Another benefit of subscribing is I do giveaways on this channel about once a month. So if you're subscribed, you'll be the first to know when those are happening. So today I wanted to go over a new practice drill for you using two coins. Now you can use two identical coins, but I think it's better if you use two different coins for this one, because later on we're going to be getting into a spellbound routine. Now the benefits of this should be obvious to you. Uh, most coin magic involves more than one coin, so practicing with two coins with your different palms and moving positions will really help out when you're studying those routines that are more complicated. So to start out, I want to go over one of my favorite moves in all of coin magic, the Demanche Change. Now this move was published in 1902 in a book called The Modern Conjurer by C. Lang Neal. And you can find this book uh, for free in the public domain at archive.org. I recommend you go to that website. There's a lot of other old books you can look at for free. So I'll go over the description here that I'll put up the pictures from the book so we can, we can follow along with that as well. So you begin with one coin and finger palm, and another coin held at the fingertips on display. The coin at the fingertips is going to be pulled down to the base of the thumb. The tip of the thumb will bend over the coin and grip it by itself. This is frickle palm. Now the tip of the thumb will continue downward behind the fingers to contact the coin in finger palm. That gets pushed out to the fingertips. The coin previously held in frickle palm automatically rolls over and ends up in finger palm. This is just a beautiful move that can be used as a coin switch or a, a visible color change that's meant to be seen. As a coin switch, it's a covert action, but as a color change, it's, it's an overt action that happens right out in front. So again, the first finger pulls down, the thumb bends over to grip it. The thumb continues into the hand behind the fingers to contact the coin and finger palm. That's pushed to the fingertips as the coin previously held by the thumb tumbles over and is caught in finger palm. So after the demanche change, we end up in the exact same position, but the coins have switched places. The next place we're going to go is Tenkai Pinch or Goshman Pinch. So from here, we're going to rotate our hand downward, palm to the floor, and make a fist. When you open your hand, you're going to display the other coin. The first coin is gone. So what's happening there is, as the hand rotates downward, the thumb is pushing the coin against the fingernails and over, enough so that the pinky can pinch the edge of that coin. Your thumb can now let go, and your pinky has control of the whole coin. Now you swivel your hand open to reveal the other coin. So again, we're here. As we come down, I already begin 
to push that coin over the fingernails. So from here to here, I'm already in position. So we're up here, come down, already in position. Then open the hand. Now with the Tenkai pinch or Gashmin pinch, your pinky will come behind your ring finger ever so slightly. So it's able to hide any edge of that coin that's poking through. Now this grip is especially good with half dollars. It can be done with dollar coins, but your angles are severely worse. And you have to come way down and point your hand away from the spectator. With a half dollar, you have much more range and much more height. You don't have to bring your hand all the way down to your waist. So that's something to keep in mind as you execute the Tenkai Pinch. The next move is a, a variation of a David Roth idea that he called the Flash Change. But uh, this is from Jay Sankey, and it's on his channel if you want to check that out. So I don't think I'm exposing too much here. With the coin in Tenkai Pinch, we're going to apparently dump the coin on display into the left hand. What really happens is this coin is retained and this coin is dumped into the left hand. Kind of that action. So of course you want to you want to immediately close that hand to hide the fact the coin has been switched. And then now you want to reveal that. So once again we were here. Come down, Tenkai pinch. Show the other coin. Now we're going to dump that while retaining that in finger palm. Again, remember with your finger palm, mainly use the ring finger, not both fingers. So now we have the other coin. As we come up to grab this coin, the finger palm coin falls to fingertip rest. And as we're coming up, the classic palm. And this is a, a good motivation to cover the classic palm movement. So we come up, classic palm, as we go to grab this. You're in a very good display here with the Caps Molini subtlety. Now we're gonna do a palm to palm change. Now this is an old dice gambling move, or dice cheat move, and has been used since the early 1900s or probably before. So with a coin in classic palm and one on display, your hand is tilted downward with your palm facing left. You're going to bring the coin on display into fingertip rest as the other coin falls down and the first coin is now classic palmed. Now you can bring out the coin that was in palm out to display. So in, in real action it would be more like that. And you, this, this one move is going to really help your classic palm because you need to have the coins avoid talking. So just doing this one move as a drill in itself, if you're working on your classic palm, this will help a ton. So just doing this over and over, switching the coins, remember, keep them from talking. This is going to really help your classic palm. So we're in a new position with a new coin on display, and we're gonna do one last movement to help clean up this drill. So we're gonna bring that classic palm coin back into finger palm, just with gravity and inertia. So we're gonna come from down here to up here, and it cleans up our, our palm. So this is the cycle of the whole practice drill. We're gonna start out in finger palm with a coin on display, Demonch change, Tenkai pinch, the Capricorn change from Jay Sankey. Coming up into classic palm when we grab this, then a palm to palm switch or change, and then a final cleanup from classic palm to finger palm. So going over the drill in close up, we've got one coin in finger palm, one coin on display. Now for the demonch change, remember the first finger drags that coin down to the base of the thumb, 
where the thumb can bend over the edge and take control. This is frickle palm. The thumb tip continues down into the hand behind the fingers to contact the finger palm coin. As you begin to push this out into view, notice the edge of the half dollar slips off uh, the thumb pad and it's only being held at the base of the thumb. Now as you continue to push this coin up, the half dollar bites into the edge where you're at the base of the fingers. As you continue up, the half dollar is flipping and now the fingers can curl around and get it properly into a finger palm. So again, down to the base of the thumb, frickle palm, push that out. The copper coin is being revolved and then re-gripped. And I like to turn that coin a couple times before the move and then after the move. So from here, we're going to go into Tenkai Pinch. So we're palm up, we're going to come palm down. And in that time, we're going to get into the position. So try to do this slowly, but also end up in the position. Uh, the thumb pushes that coin over the fingernails down to the pinky where it's gripped. You don't need much, just about that much. So this happens by the time you're palm down. So you're here, then here. Now you can show that change and do the Capricorn change from Jay Sinky. Now this isn't so much as a dumping action as it is a, a swivel and then we're turning this hand. The problem is if you dump, you're going to see that coin coming from the outside of your hand. So adding a, a little bit of a swivel and then a turn makes it much more convincing. So we're there and then there. This hand drops to the side. We're going to come up to grab this coin, but on the way, the finger palm coin was allowed to fingertip rest. Now it's pressed into classic palm as we're grabbing the copper coin. We're in that Caps Malini subtlety, and we're doing the palm to palm change. Now I like to let the coin in classic palm drop uh, to my pinky and ring finger as I use my middle finger and my ring finger the classic palm copper coin. Now we can bring that out into view and the coins have switched. So we're here, drop, clench, and the switch is me. Now the final cleanup on our way up to chest level, the classic palm coin is dropped into finger palm. Now we're able to display our open palms. So that's a nice little practice drill to help get you started. There's some difficult stuff in there that I hope stretches your abilities. And there's even more you could put into that. But I just wanted to do a couple changes or switches and things that you're going to use all the time. Now this isn't a routine in itself. What I want to go over is a more structured spellbound routine for you that uses a lot of these moves and a couple other ones. So let's take a look at that. I want to show you something interesting using this old silver half dollar. Now if we just give it a squeeze, we can get to change to a copper coin. Another little squeeze changes back to silver. It's the oddest thing. It even happens if I just give it a wave. Now it's not one color on one side and a different color on the other side, but whenever I squeeze it, it changes color completely. As long as I just leave it in my hand for a second, it'll just change color. It's the oddest thing. Would you like to take a look at it? So that's just a, a simple but fun spellbound routine I came up with just for this video. So let's dive in on the teaching to that.
So here's a little close-up of the Spellbound routine. Now we're going to start out with one coin in Classic Palm, the other out on display. So we begin with the Caps Molini subtlety. Now remember your angles on this. You want to either point downward or a little bit to the left to really hide that coin. So we're showing the coin. I toss it to one hand, toss it back to the other hand, and it can't see the coin in Classic Palm. I'm going to toss it back, and this time I'm going to finger palm the half dollar. Remember, just use your ring finger. And the coin in Classic Palm gets released into the left hand. So in normal speed, that'd be like this. Now, as soon as the right hand drops, the thumb is positioning that coin into Tenkai Pinch. So that happens from here and down to there. So we do the dump and then begin sliding that coin as your whole arm is swinging down to your side. Meanwhile, your attention is focused on your left hand. So give that a squeeze, then show the change. Now the right hand comes up, but as it opens, you don't want to come up and open. You want to come up at waist level and then turn your body as your right hand swivels open. You don't want to open it like over the top like this. So you show the change, you turn to the right, and then your right hand swivels open. Now you can toss that coin to your right hand. Now we're going to do the Capricorn change from Jay Sinky. Turn back to our left. As the right hand comes over, swivel, and then dump. So again, we're here, and then there. Now you squeeze again, show the, the next change. Now you go up to grab the coin, the copper coins and finger palm still. Display to the audience. Now we're going to do the demonch change. Remember that's sliding down to the base of the thumb. The thumb takes control. Thumb tip pushes out the finger palm coin as the other coin is rolled into finger palm. So they've switched places. So again, we're here. Coin is grabbed. The monch chain. Now this coin is dropped in the left hand. The right hand drops and is going to come right back up. That's so you can push this coin to the index finger and then into JW. So we've executed the demonstration change and then let that coin fall. The right hand drops. The left hand displays for a beat. The right hand comes up and we're in JW. Take, take control of that coin. You can really emphasize this moment. I like to give that a turn, just so there's no suspicion about a double-sided coin. Now we're going to take this back and come forward with it. You don't want to come away to the side, because your right hand has to stay in this position with the JW grip. So you don't want to pose like this. So it's best to come forward with the coin, and then we're going to come back, and the hands will meet. The copper coin drops into finger palm as the right hand comes to the left fingertips and deposits the half dollar. So in full motion, we'd be here and there, showing that copper coin and then changing it there. Now we're going to take that coin back, drop the left hand as we're displaying, have the left hand come back up with that coin and finger palm, but it's hidden by the left fingertips and the angle of the spectator. So now you're going to execute any retention vanish that you've been working on. I just use a simple, this is a variation of John Ramsey's uh, pivot vanish, which happens up here. I just do it to the side. So we're holding that coin and I let it pivot. The middle finger takes the coin 
under the thumb. But you can use any retention here. But the next move is going to be to get into balance palm. So we're here, the thumb comes under the coin, the coin is pushed to the back of the thumb in balance palm. Now we have free motion of our hand, so we do a wave and then show the change. At the same time, the thumb is going to just pinch the coin and we're in back thumb palm. Let me go a step back. So a retention, squeeze, a wave, show the change. Now you're in back thumb palm. We're going to turn everything to the right. So now we have both palms empty, one coin. This is a really good moment. So I toss this over to the right. Now the right hand can't toss as it normally would, or else we see that coin. So here I just skip the coin over. Maintain a horizontal position with your hand, and the coin will still go over just fine. So we toss once with the left, then back to the left. Now the third time, the left hand's gonna plant its thumb on the coin, and we're gonna make the motion like we're slapping the coin back to the right. But at the same time, the coin, the coin is retained in the left. If the left hand drops all the way down, now the right hand's gonna do the recovery move from back thumb palm. So we're here, back, and then there. Now the last move is just a French drop, but we're using it as a switch. So going through the motions of a, a French drop, but the left hand is going to bring its coin into view at the moment where a normal French drop would be a vanish or a take. So we're here and then there. This is just a fun timing thing. It's fun to practice in the mirror. You'll fool yourself sometimes with this. So you're there, and then there. Now that coin ends up in finger palm, and you're in a good, nice, clean position to end. So that's a nice little spellbound routine you can use as practice, and it's a, it's a real fooler in itself. Just like the one coin routine we went over, these are great things that have dual purposes. They're gonna help you with all your moves, but it's also something you can perform. They both have these cyclical patterns to them, so they're fun to practice over and over because you, you end where you began, so you can keep going and going. Now, as far as the spellbound routine, a lot of people don't love the spellbound routine because it seems like coin juggling, which I've seen some routines that really do look like they're juggling two coins but I've seen other routines that are really fooling. And I think a few things are required of each spellbound routine to make it more magical. The first being, you need to have as many moments as you can in the routine where the audience can only see one coin. So I, I've thrown into this one, this cap subtlety. So we start out like this, the audience can see one coin, your hands are apparently empty. Another moment is when you're in Tenkai Pinch. Both hands are palm up. There's only one coin in view. And then the JW grip, your hands are seem wide open and there's only one coin to be seen. And the back thumb palm, again, both hands are palm up. There's only one coin that's seen. So I think as many times as you can add a moment where there's only one coin, it's gonna dispel any notion to the audience that, oh, he's just switching one coin for the other coin. Another thing that I think really helps make a good spellbound routine is to just keep it short and sweet. The effect is clear and direct. So the more you go on and on with these rapid fire changes of the coin, it's more likely the audience is gonna catch on to what's happening. You run the risk of taking a magic moment that could be really fooling and then you're taking it into a, a juggling exposition. So just take the best of what you got and see how it all fits together. 
and keep it short. It's just like an ambitious card routine. The last thing that I think can really help a spellbound routine is to have some sort of conclusion. So you've changed this coin, you know, four or five times, but then what happens to the coin? You can just hand it out and put your hands in your pocket and you're clean, but I've always struggled to come up with the conclusion to the trick. So that's something to think about, and I'd love to hear in the comments uh, any ideas you have. I've had some other ideas with Spellbound. If you check down in my older videos, I change a coin to a sponge ball, I change a coin to a, a ball bearing, and I use a fork and a chopstick as the reason the coins change. So check out some of those older ideas and let me know what you think. So guys, that's it for this week. I hope these ideas help you and uh, gives you something to pass the day during this time. And again, you can do all this stuff with two coins in your pocket. You can take one out, go over the one coin stuff, then add the second one and go over the two coin stuff. And if you perform the routines, you've got a one coin routine and a spellbound routine that'll last, you know, five minutes in real performance. So give that a try. Also, be sure to check out my website, rickholcomb.bigcartel.com. I've got two things up there right now with more on the way. So uh, check those out, and I want to thank everyone who's already purchased stuff from the website. It's helped out a ton. I can't thank you enough. So that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.